All right, guys, this is it. This is your last day to get entries to win Miley 2.0. For every $5 you spend at thehuntingcompany.com gets you one entry towards the car. Whoever wins the car will get flown out to hang out with me and take delivery of the car and finally get to drive her home. If you haven't already, click the links down below to the website. Time is running out. You got less than 24 hours to gather your entries. Good luck. It's been about two months since you guys have seen the 1965 Mustang, and it still exists. Today we're at Rad Industries, and today's video is gonna be dedicated to showing you all the progress that has been done on this car. We'll go over everything from the front to the rear, looking at the fuel cell, looking at the new ECU systems that we have, looking at what everyone's mainly excited about, which is the RB26 inside. I haven't seen this car since you guys have seen it. This is my first time seeing it, so we're gonna go through everything together. But I know what you guys want to see, so I'll show it to you off the rip. The RB26 looks pretty good. And there's actually a fair amount of room in the inside of the bay with the RB in there. And I feel like I'm committing a crime here because I'm having Mr. Jay-Z himself work on the RB26. How much have you guys done since the last time I've seen you, Dan? Last time you were here, the motor was not in here. So we made, we made like a lot of mounts and we put the fuel cell in the back. Yes, I know you're saying it's RB and I'm Jay-Z guy, but <laughs> we work on plenty of engines here. We're still waiting on some of the parts. We had, we actually had the head off because we refreshed that, did all the timing, put a Tomei oil pump. You know, you gotta do a little couple things, tricks to these motors so that they're, you know, safer for, you know, modifying. So we did the restrictor for the oil going into the head. We probably have like, well, there's a lot of work left. So there's a lot of work left, yeah. We got radiator, intercooler, we gotta mount the... One thing that Dan didn't really preface you guys is a lot of parts right now are just on back order. Whether it's material, metal material, or like actual parts that we need to order for this car. I mean, I think well, there was a few things that we've been waiting on um, like from the beginning that we ordered right off the rip. So it's not that they're not working on it, there's just a lot of parts that are still we, having to come in. We did, I guess last time you were here was the frame even on? Yeah, no, the frame was not on the way so if you guys don't remember we have a roadster shop chassis underneath the car which is pretty much like a bolt-on chassis so you actually see this on both the sides of the rails which I'll kind of show you in just a little bit but that was the last the last time I was here that wasn't even on all the way that's true so we did that and then you had these sent which are like the deletes for the where the OEM strut tower would have been you guys had to cut out the shock towers because yeah. the chassis comes with all new suspension geometry and brakes which again just stay tuned I'll show you guys that and then we put a Woodward column in here. This is just like the, through the firewall part. It's not that beautiful here, but if you go on the inside, it's a nice billet steering column. We did a custom one of those for this car. Put a Willwood pedal set in here. And then we did like custom plumbing from these reservoirs out here. So it's turning into a race car pretty quick. You might want to check some of that out. Yeah, that was one thing that when I dropped it off, I was like, essentially, Dan, I want you to treat this like it's a race car. It's gonna have the body of a 65, but the actual driving integrity of the 65 is completely gone. With the new chassis and all the suspension and everything we're changing to it, it's essentially just gonna be um, a race car. And because this car is from 1965, there are no EPA regulations. So we can legally throw in an aftermarket at ECU, we don't need to worry about emissions and smog, so we can actually build this into a race car and it's allowed to go on the street, which is pretty cool. But look at that, that is beautiful. And one cool thing about that gas pedal is it came out of a Supra, so I did get some Supra in there. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he, he made sure to, to leave a little bit of Supra integrity in this car. So we got the Willwood pedal sets. Those are really, really cool. I told you guys once, I've told you guys twice, I've told you guys three times, this is like my millionth time telling you. Cove Split Speaker is the best affordable speaker out there, and let me tell you why. If you're really clumsy like myself and you end up just dropping your Cove Split Speaker in the pool, it's fine because it's waterproof and it floats. So if you happen to drop it, it ain't gonna sink and it's still gonna play your music. I can already see you guys typing it. Why is it called the Cove Split Speaker? Because it splits into two. You now have a surround sound immersive speaker System. And the next time you watch the vlog, you can set a speaker over here, and then you can split another speaker over here, and you can stand in the middle and it sounds like a surround sound system in your house. And don't be worried if you drop it because these things are very durable. I use this thing nearly on a daily basis, and I also brought it to our camping trip, which you guys probably saw it in the camping vlog. And right now, if you use code TJHunt67, you can save up to 60% off or more when picking out a Cove speaker product. I'm gonna leave the links down below. You guys need to check it out and pick up a speaker, do yourself a favor. And the next time you find yourself using the Cove speaker, 
speaker watching a vlog, post a picture on Instagram, tag me in it, and I'm gonna reshare it. Thank you so much for Code for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget that code TJ167. Now let's get back to the grind. We have a CD7 from AEM, so we got rid of, and this was an executive call that I made that Dan wasn't sure if I wanted to do or not, and I was like, um, get, get stuck. This is the stock tack. Um, we ended up getting rid of it. It didn't even work when it was in this car, and rather than reviving it, I was like, honestly, let's just get rid of it, and... You could put it in. I was gonna so say it's we, gonna go in there. You just won't use it because we gotta keep it like authentic. Yeah, I was gonna say we can either It'll stick back it back in there. in there or you could make like a block off I plate. I think you should put it in there, and but just don't. I mean, this is me. You could do whatever, but <laughs> I don't care. It's just in there, and then like it's just there. But you're obviously yeah. Getting off CD7. But the CD7 guys is a, a digital tachometer that kind of does everything you want it to. I run it in my 350 comp car, and it has shift lights. You can do custom gauges. You can sh make it show whatever you want, and it's definitely needed when running the RB26. So that's pretty cool. This isn't my steering wheel. This is from someone else's car, but they're just using it to mock mock the car. And one thing as well that we're not going to be using. That you're seeing in here are these stock seats this is temporary until we figure out what seats you want to put in here I don't know if I should do like Sparkos or if I should go like extreme JDM and do like bride seats haven't quite figured out the direction we want to go with it yet but this is not staying what is this what is this junk oh hey nice we can finally get rid of all this crappy tax and all that stuff that's all gonna go and actually too, we could probably fix the stereo at one point too because this stereo system does not work. I think the previous owner actually had like random speakers in the back that never actually worked. So we'll probably get this thing hooked up with an audio system at one point. Stock dinky replica GT350 steering wheel, auto pro. It's a rep wheel. I don't know what we're gonna do with it. It would be kind of cool to utilize something like this or find like a, a period correct steering wheel. I don't know, we'll figure it out as we get closer to the end date of this car. So in the rear of the car, we have the new fuel cell. This is uh, definitely needed because we got rid of the stock fuel tank. That thing was trash and it was gross. We got rid of it so you can actually see some of the fab work. I cut a hole in the back of the trunk, fitted the cell so it hangs just a little bit lower than the car, nice and secure. But what's nice about the radium um, is that it's a 14 gallon cell, so it still holds a decent amount of fuel. Well, probably, I mean, this car's gonna get horrible miles per gallon, but it's nice because they make a cell that is this large and also has like drop in pumps and the fittings and it's, it's, it's a really, really nice cell and it's gonna complement what we're trying to do really, really well. So as you can kind of tell, the trunk will still be usable. This car is obviously gonna be a street car, but it's, um, for the most part, this is gonna be like a race car on the street. It's gonna have the integrity of a race car with a few, like we're probably not gonna put AC in it or anything like that, but it's gonna be just a 65 body on top of a bunch of modern parts. We don't have the exhaust in, but Dan and I were just kind of talking about how when we do route the exhaust, we're gonna have them come through from the back of the turbo and split it, and we're still gonna retain the, the factory mount locations or the factory exhaust outlets. Underneath the car, you get a better view a little bit of the chassis. So you can actually see there's a strut right there that, that is not where it normally was on the 65, and that is a modern strut. You got adjustments and their true coilovers, the big diff in the back, and it's talking about stuff that's big, we have the new brakes on the car as well, but you'll notice that we're missing the calipers. It's because the brakes are so large that the calipers wouldn't fit on these wheels. So we actually have to have HRE come up here, hopefully in the next week or two, to do custom scans of the car because when they come and scan the car, they'll be able to take 3D measurements and they'll be able to let us know how big our wheels have to be, how deep we can go with our offsets, what the barrel sizes need to be, and we can figure out what wheels we want to do in this because in the front, I don't even think we have the calipers. Nope, we don't. They literally take up the whole entire face of the wheel. So we need to get some custom wheels made for this car. One thing that I am trying to do that I haven't talked about too much just because this car hasn't been on the channel in so long is my goal with this is to try to make it look as um, uh, period correct to 1965 as possible. I want it to look like a Mustang from the outside. I don't want to modernize too much of the exterior look. I want this car to look 
like a true GT350 from the 60s that's like been restored. And then as you get closer, so the reason why I'm telling you that is the wheels, I'm gonna have to pick some wheels from H3 that actually are more towards the era of the 60s, which I'm pretty sure they have some options. But that's another reason why we're trying to utilize the factory exhaust outlets because we want that to kind of flow with the, the theme of the 60s. And all the pieces on the car are all replica GT350 pieces, which are obviously all gonna stay because again, we want to actually be cool to add, make this a real vent because the GT350 actually has a vent here and this doesn't have that. So maybe we might get SOS to do something crazy, but once the motor is in and it's running and the car is actually drivable, this is gonna go straight to SOS to get a full paint job and fix up a bunch of the body pieces because it's not really the best. And we're kind of thinking about adding some details like right here where it says GT350, I'm thinking about changing it to say GT RB26 rather than the GT350. I've been driving home from Ride Industries and for the last hour, I've been in traffic. This is horrible. I've never seen this before. A car or a big truck with a trailer. Oh, all of the cars on the back of the trailer are screwed. Oh my God. That is horrible. That was a lot of traffic, but that was, that was a lot of damage, dang. Hope they're okay. So the Mustang's coming along. It's taking a while because waiting on parts, but I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update because I get so many questions and comments about that car, and a lot of people always say, I forgot you even had that car, which I get. I still have a C8, and if 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 my, my C8 wasn't in Texas, I would drive up to go give you guys an update video, but more to come on that car later. And as you guys can see, the GT3 RS makes quite the good golf bag carrier. So I planned out a little game of golf today on the way home for Ride Industries. Let's go swing some sticks. Didn't play that well, but it was good to get out there. Do you guys ever go to those dinners with your significant other's parents? It's one of those things where you don't really want to go, but you kind of have Wait, to. Wait, what? I'm joking. You want to do this. You want to do this. I tried to cancel tonight. He was like, in fact, I have the text messages. Here I go. Here Can I, I show go. them the new car? Yeah. Wait, are you sure? I think they should see I it. I don't know if they're ready, honestly. I think they, I think they should see it. Mm -hmm. you, think we, you think, I think, uh, I think they can handle I it. I think they can handle it, honestly. All right, guys. Here it is. Here, here it is. It's a 2021 um, Toyota Lamborghini Matrix. <laughs> Just kidding. This is on, Sabrina's original car. This car what? right here. This is from when I opened the door in our apartment. I don't wall. know if I ever showed that Sabrina back. You did. You Sabrina did. It's in a vlog. was backing out of our garage at the apartment complex with the door open. Don't even want to talk about how that you slips upset. your mind. I was upset. And she backed straight in. Like imagine, like there's this is this you is the edge of the, the wall. You can see it on the door. Like she backed I out with the door open, and it got caught on the edge of the garage. It's so bad. Oh, there's some rust. There. She's a good girl. Look at these I, aftermarket. I, Look at these HREs. I don't want to Look talk. Look at these HREs. I don't want to talk crap about this car because I know her mom, Michelle, is going to watch this vlog and Michelle's going to be like, hey, that's my Matrix. Don't talk crap about my own Matrix. I'm driving the Matrix. Sabrina's going to drive the G Wagon. That's called relationship. What management. a guy. What a guy right here. But honestly. Dude, who keeps a bottle of <laughs> coronavirus? Am I right? Where are the keys? They're in the center divider. No, they're not. Yes, they are. Just look in there. Look and actually don't not look like a fing man and then check the above thing. It's not in here. This car is here because at, someone from their family like accidentally left their keys. The car has been stranded here for days. I was gonna drive it back to them. It's not in here. Check under they the left key. the key again. There's no key in here. Hey, we just came to leave and we're trying to- It's in the center divider. No, we've told totally no, the not. center divider. It's not. TJ, the, look, open up the second one. Is it the lower oh, he's, one? TJ is full blown dumb. Okay, thank you, I found it. Matrix, baby. Wait, does it still have the air intake? Let's find out. Carbon fiber hood is gone, boys, but oh my God, look at the rock chips. Oh, there's no intake anymore. Who? It was probably Todd. It was pro her dad probably took, I'm gonna have a stern talking with him. Who deletes a cold air intake? It was a clean mod, baby. Oh. 
I can't tell you how many times Sabrina's tried to convince me to do like a sleeper build on this Matrix and swap like some ridiculous motor in it. I've thought about it a few times and then I quickly realize no. No thanks. All right, Mr. Big T, I have a question for you. Yes, what? What did you do? Hold on. Okay, okay, that was unnecessary. What did you do to the Matrix? Do you know what you did? <laughs> hmm? What did I do to the Matrix? Yeah. The only thing I did is I took off that stupid air intake. Wow! <laughs> Back on. Yeah, and when it I runs when I no, it doesn't. That was my first mod. When I, I drove it here, yes. You put were, I you I put pressed with the performance. No, I put up the hood and I was like, oh, I, I tried to show the vlog the intake, and it was gone. <laughs> and I was like, wow. It kept stalling as soon as I repossessed it <laughs> from my daughter. Oh my god. It kept stalling and idling. <laughs> that's true. I think that's it. I think that's I think that that was a, that was a driver error. I took it to my mechanic and he said, this air intake <laughs> is bad. Are you kidding me? It was like 50 bucks from, from eBay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Come on. Bucks for a matrix. Yeah. So that's it. Are we rolling? Yeah. Okay. So that's it for today's video. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> this is harder than you. So that's all for today's video. Peace out and keep moving forward. <laughs> that was good. <laughs>